I'm Jackson and this is The Loop Film and today we're going to be doing a recap of The Last of Us Episode 2. Episode 3 comes out in a few days so hopefully this refreshes your memory. Now, if you haven't watched it then there will be spoilers ahead, but don't worry because I've left the major, major stuff to the very end. We open in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, and we follow Professor Ibu Ratna, a mycologist from the University of Indonesia. She is taken to examine and conduct an autopsy on a dead victim of the cordyceps fungus. Aside from the bullet hole in the victim's head, she looks pretty normal. Until the professor reaches into their mouth and pulls out the fungus. It's so gross. Look at it wriggling around, still trying to get to her. Then we find out that the victim works on a flour mill factory. Now this confirms a massive fan theory that the fungus is spread worldwide through flour. Now Jakarta has the largest flour mill in the whole world. Talk about an unlucky place to work after being infected by a brain controlling, psychotic, violent, dangerous, zombie like fungus. Am I right? Now a really cool thing that I noticed and that you may have missed is in the first episode Joel and Sarah managed to avoid flour completely. Sarah doesn't make pancakes because there's no pancake mix. They don't take the biscuits from next door. Sarah doesn't eat the cookies because she doesn't like the raisins in them. And Joel forgets to buy a cake at the end of the day. Next up we have this awesome shot and there's no cuts at all so we feel like we're in the room with them. We are told that 14 possibly infected people are missing from the factory and straight away you see the professor's reaction. Watch her hand when she finds this out. Lalu pekerja yang lain bagaimana? 14 orang hilang. Brilliant acting there. We then get to the big question. How can this be stopped? But as Dr. Newman said in episode one, there is no cure. We lose. The professor reveals the only way to save the world is to bomb. Bomb the city. Bomb. Mulailah pengoboman. Bomb seluruh kota. We also see later on in the episode that the US government had that same idea. Is this where they bombed? Yeah. They hit most of the big cities like this. They had to slow the spread somehow. Now let's get back to that trio that we all love. Ellie, Joel and Tess continue on their journey to the state building. However, on their way through post-apocalyptic Boston, they come across a huge horde of infected. The infected also seem to react to sunlight. Now this is a brand new thing because it is not in the game. I'm very excited to see what explanation this will be given. Tess then reveals one of the new things for the series which does not feature in the game. The fungus also grows underground. Long fibers like wires, some of them stretching over a mile. You step on a patch of cordyceps in one place and you can wake a dozen infected from somewhere else. This is such a cool idea and like I said it's not present in the game. This hive mind is similar to what we see in Stranger Things season 4 when stepping on a vine in the upside down can alert Vecna to your location. This means that some infected are connected through the fungus meaning you could touch it in one place and the infected could feel it in a complete different area therefore knowing exactly where you are. The trio makes their way through a museum which is where they come up against the awful clickers. These are the blind infected formed by the fungus splitting open their heads and like bats they use echolocation, their clicks. They also have a heightened sense of hearing like in this scene where they hear Ellie breathing and this one where they hear Joel reloading his gun. These clickers must be infected for over a year to get to this stage. That's why they're a lot more nasty and their clothes are all torn up. Now this next part will contain big spoilers for this episode, so don't say I didn't warn you. They continue on their way to the state building and you can see Tess is in a lot more of a rush than the other two. That's because she has limited time left. 
Yes, that's right, Tess has been bitten. At this point when watching, we don't actually realize this, but you can see in this scene that she has blood on her neck, indicating that she has been attacked. The other two don't notice at all because they're a lot more behind her, but also because Joel is so focused on Ellie's new scratch. Upon arrival at the state building, they find everyone is already dead. This is very different to the game where Tess has to hold off Fedra while Joel and Ellie escape. Tess reveals her infected bite to the group and compares it to Ellie's scratch, which hasn't got any sign of infection at all. Tess's hand tremors here, which is a side effect of the infection and part of the turning process. Joel kills an infected soldier here, which triggers the hive mind and the cordyceps in the ground wraps around his hand and awakens the horde. Tess then rigs the place with explosives, grenades, pours oil on the floor, ready to pay the ultimate sacrifice in a bid to save humanity. As the infected run through the building, Tess is noticed and a stalker, another type of infected, closes in to seal her death with a kiss. Tess finally ignites the lighter and lets go, which causes the horde and her to blow up. We see Joel and Ellie outside far enough away to not be affected and from there they will continue their journey west. So that's about it. Episode 3 will be out soon and sure enough I'll be here to give you a recap and let you know anything you may have missed. Thanks for watching and make sure to like, subscribe and follow us on all our socials at The Loop GA. I'm Jackson and you're now in The Loop.